Hey, what's up everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent, and today we're playing the new Double Down Seasonal Event, which is an alternate game mode in which every card in our deck gets duplicated, and then whenever we play a unit, we will also play a random unit from our deck that costs the same number of provisions. That means all the strongest units in the game we can play twice. And today we're going to play what might be the most highly buffed deck from the most recent patch, so let's go give it a look. So today we'll be playing a Nilfgaard Double Cross deck that can be described in one word, statuses. We'll be using tons of spying, lock, and even a bit of poison to drive our opponents crazy. Firstly, we have Emir, who will give spying to every unit that our opponent plays, which sets up a bunch of other cards. As well as Philippe Van Morlehem, who, after getting reworked in the most recent patch, now gives tons of statuses, starting with Doomed, then Locked, and then Poison. And the more statuses our opponent has, the more quickly we can get to the Lock to shut down those units, or Poison to outright remove them. Then we can use Letho to transform into another Philippe to get even more statuses out there even more quickly, and then get tons of boosts with the Thirsty Dane whenever we do so. And similarly with the Seditious Aristocrats. Then the Mangonel gives us additional damage whenever they get Spying, and likewise with the Thanad Turncoat. Then we have a few more statuses with cards like Fangs the Empire for Poison, Van Morlehem Hunter for Locke, and the newly reworked Van Morlehem Servant to transfer over statuses from one unit onto another. Then if we play Philippe or Emir in round 1, we can use a Sire to bring them back into our deck for round 2 or round 3, and then replay them with one of our tutors. Then we'll finish with some combination of Vadier, who, because we have so much spying, will have plenty of targets to steal, thanks to his new buffs. And Terra Nova, who again, because we give so much spying to our opponents, will have tons of things that we can create copies of. So those are all the big combos. To put it simply, the more statuses you give your opponents, the more likely you are to win. But I do think that if you practice and master this deck, that there are so many options for control and scoring points that the potential is almost limitless. So let's go seed in action. All right, so going up against Skoy, Tell here. And they'll go first. Okay, and we have Oniro. That's huge because we can use Oniro to get the other Oniro and get two Echoed copies going into round two, which is especially helpful if we have a Sire because we can play some big cards, use a Sire to get them back into our deck in round two or round three, and then use the Echoed copies of Oniro to play them again. Let's get rid of the Mangonel, and Amir could be one of our key engines in round one, so let's stick with this. Okay, it's Hawker Smuggler. Well, I suppose between that... And their leader ability, we should assume they're doing a whole lot of hand boosting. So first, let's go Oniro. Into the other Oniro. Into a defender. Which will get the other defender out from our deck. And I guess we'll put these in separate rows. And that is, of course, set up to get Emir down. And then it's their defender. And they split it between two rows as well. Alright, so what are they up to? Well, let's go with Amir here. And do we care about Seditious Aristocrats? I mean, we might not need to give additional spying with the Thanad Turncoat. However, we could do this. They give spying to one of their defenders and then steal that defender with Vadier. So I'm a little intrigued by that thought, in which case, maybe we do just get rid of you. And the other Amir. And we don't want two Terranovas here. That's not any good because he's our only 13 provision cost unit, so we were going to get this second one out from our deck when we played the first one anyway. So let's get rid of you. And yeah, then it's, well, Dunka for more hand boosting. Giving them another Dunka for more hand boosting. So now this is where we go Mage Torturer. And put Spying on that Figus. And not a bad time for a Thirsty Dame. So now that that has Spying, we can play Vadier to try to steal that. And then Dryad Matron. So they're going to do mostly hand boosting here. That is the first real engine that's actually going to assist them in round one. So I think our objective here is to outscore them in round one, get last say, 
and then do something to shut down their last few highly hand-boosted units. In which case, we might actually want to save Battier for that purpose and perhaps go Thanad Turncoat and give spying to that Figus. And then, I mean, I guess we'll poison one of them as well. And we can use the Turncoat to start damaging that Figus and we might not have enough time to actually steal that Figus with an Emir, but it's theoretically a possibility. All right, so they go for thinning. But before we go with our thinning, let's go with another Thirsty Dame to be an engine for us here, because she'll get boosted pretty often, since we have a mirror down here as well. And at this rate, oh, unfortunately, the defenders both have spying already. So this doesn't really help us all that much. It does give us another assimilate unit down here, but that's not going to be a huge factor. So now we also hit, I guess, this Vigus. Okay, then it's Simloss for a whole lot of Orbs of Insight, and also, that was a Gezros at the end of that chain. So fortunately, Vitality is a status, so that means we're getting a boost every time they do this as well, or two boosts really, because we have two Thirsty Dames. But Gezros is going to be fairly powerful if he has room to do his thing. Now they have so many orbs of insight that they're getting another round of them all. But fortunately, we did get our Thirsty Dame down just in time. That means at least the two-point boost they're getting, we're matching it. And for what it's worth, now that we put spying on Gezros, we could use Terra Nova to play a Gezros of our own, which is actually quite tempting because I don't know if it's going to get much better than that and they have a whole lot of units on the board right now so a whole lot of people get damaged or boost technically his adrenaline is not yet active so maybe what we do is first we do go with our thinning the hunting pack this is going to basically fill this entire row would have been even better if we had you down right before they did all of those uh orbs of insight as well should have technically gone for that Vegas, but I don't exactly think we're making it through that wall of armor yet anyway. Okay, and there you have it. Didn't even need to use Terra Nova to get Gezros. In fact, we're going to win on even here. So that works really well for us. So now we get our two echoed copies of Onero. That's great. Thirsty Dame and Van Morlehem's Servant, maybe not as relevant anymore, because they would have been most helpful in round one when we were using all those Amir spying statuses. So we could get rid of you, unless we use Oniros to get Philly, which is probably what we are going to do. So tell you what, we might even keep what we have here. Maybe we swap you out just to see if we can get Philly or not. And since they did give us the round one win on even cards here, I think we've got to pass and force them to go a card down and give us double last say in round three because since they've been doing all this hand boosting that gives us lots of time to react to whatever it is they've been trying to boost okay now we draw into our second desire and i think she's our only seven provision cost unit which means this second one is not doing us any good we were going to get her out of our deck anyway there's Philippe, so that was a card that we were going to use Oniromancy to get, but now we don't need to do that. We could use Letho to create another copy of Philippe if we'd like to, and that does now mean that the Van Morlehem Servant is much more helpful. So I'm thinking the Sire is to get back Defenders. We use Oniromancy to play those Defenders, and Turncoat may not be super necessary here. Meganil, well, equally not so helpful. Okay, double upon a Sentry. We know they have Gasros in their deck. They've played one of them. But they should still have the duplicated copy hanging out there. They can at least do some of that. Of course, we also can play Gezros through Terra Nova. But I think we start with a Sire. And we'll get a Defender back. The question is, with our second Sire, do we get a Defender back this time as well? Or do we get a little bit greedy and go for an Emir. That way we can use one Onir Mancy to get the Defender we put into our deck, and then we can use the other one to get Emir. I think we might actually want to do that. It's technically a little less efficient, because if we had gone for the same unit twice, we would have gotten them both back with a single Oniro, which would have been really convenient. That would have meant the second Oniro could be used for something else, but I think that Emir is strong enough that hopefully it is worth going that route, investing a little bit more just to get him. 
Cat Witchers. They'll deal some damage, they'll get boosted, because they have that double the sentry as well. So now let's use Oniro to get this defender. Okay, then it's Simlas. They already played one of them, but the second one, this time, oh, lots of damage. And they'll get their second Gezros as well. So they're going to go after our defender. But I'm hoping this is most of where their damage has come from, in fact. Is it going to be enough? Oh, it's just barely enough to destroy our defender. Okay. But I'm hoping that after that, they don't have many ways to mess with our units here, of course. Cat Witchers and Gezros will all start to have some damage, but eventually we will be locking those cards, so that should eventually shut them down. And of course, that would have been the case to be made for getting a Sire to bring back our other defender. Would have made us a little bit more resilient to damage like that, but we got greedy. We'll see if they can actually punish us for it, though. Because now if we go Philippe, This is the card that we really want to set up, and because we do have a vampire down here, the second one does gain zeal. So let's go after probably Gezros first, right? And it's an Elven Seer. We're starting to see some of these cards that have gotten a decent amount of hand boosting. Or Cat Witchers as well. Okay, so we could either Oniro here into Emir to start getting the spying status on as many people as possible, which does help put more statuses down for the Philippes to use. Or we could Betho Kingslayer into another Philippe, and then that means even more of this. I think we do go Emir. And let's split our big units a little bit so they aren't all in the same row. Lock is kinda helpful, maybe more so. Then this Manganel is. And then we get, oh, our other Letho. And so, yeah, we'll go. Another Philippe. And let's lock you, or doom you to eventually lock you, just so that you aren't providing all these boosts for these Cat Witchers. And then here comes their leader ability for more hand boosting. The other reason why I wanted to get a mirror down was because if we do give spying to whatever the biggest cards are in their hand that are getting all these boosts, we can eventually... Steal them with Vadier. And because we have double last say, that should be feasible. The key question is mostly, will Amir last long enough for that to be possible? Well, that is a very highly boosted Cat Witcher. Into another double Thonis entry, but at least we're given some spying here. And although the damage is certainly starting to add up, we're going to continue to lock more units. And the more cards we get down into this melee row, the more the damage is going to get split between Emir and those other units. And if we were really concerned about this Emir getting destroyed, then we could transform into a second one with Letho Kingslayer. This was originally going to be a fourth Philippe. I think we still go that route, but what if we do this? And then let's see. So who is next? We can, I think we might want to lock some of these Cat Witchers. Because they are starting to become a bit of a nuisance damage-wise. Yes, technically speaking, I think the double ton of sentries locking them would have been worth more points per turn. But I'm a little bit concerned about this Emir getting destroyed. And of course, with all these statuses, we would like to get a Thirsty Dame down here. Sirsa. Now that's not something you see every day. And they can get rid of this Philippe if they would like to. They do. Okay, they only have three cards in their hand right now, so let's use our leader ability. And we now know it's double torque. Oh. Oh. Except that's receiving all of the hand boosts. So, I mean, I guess we're playing torque here because Call of the Force is nothing for us. So this, this is lovely. Uh, you're an eight, which I don't think is going to affect much here in terms of getting cards out from our deck because the leap was our only eight and we've already played him. Let's go with, let's go with the Thirsty Dame here. And then, you should have more of these. Oh, that poison was unnecessary on that double on the sentry, though. Okay, well, more hand boosting for... Yeah, I guess the torques, they are boosting each other. It's actually kind of scary once you think about it. Because that means they're getting a whole lot of boosts on those torques feeding off each other. And now let's go with Terra Nova, because we do this... 
we have a whole lot of cards to choose from. But I was thinking that we would go, I mean, I guess we could take the defender that we gave Spine to in round one, but I was thinking it would be Gesros because his Adrenaline 3 is now active. But if we do this, that should give us a lot of damage, and then we can go with another one here. And I guess maybe we have this one give us boosts, at least in the short term. And then the status is, let's shut down some Cat Witchers here. They've been a bit of a nuisance to us. Okay, then it's one of the super boosted torques. This one's a 28. Oh, and it gets a Sheldon, so that's got to be one of the cards that they were hoping to give all the hand boosting to, but they didn't have it in their hand. So the goal here is on our next turn to play Vadier to seize probably this torque and their last torque as well but that means we do have another turn here to just play whatever we'd like so we could pass the statuses from say this dobathana sentry onto someone else who does not have a bunch of statuses yet or just apply lock directly with the van morlehem hunter let's go this route actually and we'll lock you i suppose and then get a turn code is there anybody who does not have spying right now or who doesn't have two statuses when we would like to give them two statuses. We don't really have time to check, but it shouldn't matter much. And then who is left to get rid of? Uh, I mean, we could. We could just destroy you with poison. Oh, I totally forgot about this, Philippe, as well. Um, we probably want to seize you, though. So there's Tor. That is the final one. It's 30 points. There's another unboosted Sheldon. That means next turn... It is Vadier time, and we're actually we're somewhat in danger of running out of space here, because Vadier will bring out our other Vadier, which means we're going to seize that Torque. We want to make sure we still have room, and they realize what we were setting up here, so they forfeit. All right, so going up against Skellige here, and we'll go first. Okay, so we have Onero. That's great because you can use one Onero to get the second Onero and get both Echo copies in round two. Terra Nova's a great finisher, and Letho can help get us an additional copy of one of our key cards, but we'd like to get some other big stuff here. So let's get rid of a Manganel. And Van Morlehem Servant isn't really what we're looking for. Royal Decree could give us something big like Emir or Philippe. Let's get rid of Fangs of the Empire as well. Okay, and especially because we're going first, I think it's a good opportunity for us to play this Thirsty Dame in anticipation of all the statuses we're going to give out. Melusine. Okay. I'm a fan. And Saris. I am also a fan. Unfortunately, because Melusine has Veil, we can't do much to stop her, but we could use Udgra on Saris, and because Saris is a 10 provision unit, we'd actually get to play one of our key cards out from our deck. Saris is not going to be super helpful for us, but getting rid of theirs could be a pretty big deal, because in case you didn't know, this combo is really strong. So I think we still go for it. Mostly to shut them down, but we see what we get here from our deck. It's I was hoping it was not going to be Letho, because, well, we don't exactly want to turn into another Saris. I guess we just go for even more Thirsty Dames. I was hoping we were going to get Amir instead. Morkvarg? Directly from your hand? Sigvald? Also really strong with Melusine, in case you didn't know. Now what we can do is we can play this Van Morlehem Hunter in the range row where, yes, there is some range. It's a little bit unfortunate, but I do think Lock and Sigvald's going to be big. And then, uh, well, we might be looking for Bleed here, to tell you the truth. Don't actually wants to destroy Morkvarg, because then he will get resummoned, but the lock is not super relevant. So we'll see how much progress we can make here with mostly just bronze units here. And yeah, they have a lot of cards for discard. Many of which they are having to play either from their deck or from their hand. That works well for us. Oh, also, Morkvarg obviously is going to get destroyed by Melusine, I'm now realizing. We should have locked Morkvarg, which we actually could do with the Van Morlehem Servant by transferring over this lock onto Morkvarg. It's not exactly a huge play, but if we're really concerned about this getting resummoned to the melee row, we could go that route. So, sure, we'll go for it. 
And then we can poison, uh, I guess, this Hermit is eventually going to become bigger than Sigvald. Okay, Mahakamale. Oh, clever. Clever. There's their other Ceres. So I think now it may be time to go Nero into our other Nero and just do something to shut down the Ceres that they just played. It's on four power, so Kudra does not work this time, but we can lock it. And then Bride of the Sea, have they played any alchemy cards yet? Oh, yes, they have. Oh, well, I mean, it removes the status, so I suppose. Yeah, not a bad play after all. There's some of the discard. And now it may be time to use Curse Scroll here, because I'm a little concerned about their Sigvald right now. So I think we do get Philippe out here. And we'll put back in... Yes, Van Molohem Servant might have been helpful to support Philippe, but we'll play him. We'll gain Zeal, because we have other vampires out here. And that means we can give Doomed... Or actually, he already has a status, so he goes straight into getting locked. Then we can give Doomed to you, so that we can lock you on our next turn. So I was hoping we weren't going to have to use Philippe in this round, but perhaps we did. Yes, this is also the other card that is incredibly powerful with this combo. So they're going after our Philippe's. Technically, they play these guys in the wrong spot, so they aren't going to be able to use their order abilities anymore, thankfully. This might be the last card that we play in this round, so let's use Hunting Pack here. Get the rest out from our deck. And then, we actually don't have any units, but it's fine right now. Let's lock you. And then, heal. And, uh, we'll over damage you. Then, Peller for Purification. Okay, they have a whole lot of Purification and Lock Removal, which has been a bit of a thorn in our side here. Ah, uh, and then Leader Ability to drop the Knuts down to their Berserk 5. I see now. Well, in that case, let's continue to test how much status removal they have by going Royal Decree into another Van Rolahem Hunter here to lock you. And then move that lock from you to you. And then, I guess, give one of you... Oh, well, right. The second one's locked. Uh, it does still work on Thirsty Dame, interestingly enough. They still have more lock removal! And that means we're in trouble. That was the big combo they were looking for, though. They've used it, and they've not caught us yet. So we might be relatively safe from that. The problem is, we have a relatively small lead here, and we don't really want to play any of these cards here. Yes, Letho could transform into another Philippe. However, we're not really going to have much time to benefit from that. And I'm not sure we've done much of any Terra Nova setup. That's mostly something that we would do if we had gone with an early Emir, which we did not do. But I think we might need to go this route. I think we might need to. And so, I suppose... We lock you. And yeah, there actually, there might have been some Saras plays we could have made there to create a little more space for us if needed, although they do pass. So that means we will win round one, a long round one at that, as we fought off what was a very potent combo. Okay, and we are going to get a lot of echoed copies of cards here. If it's Onero, that's totally fine. If it's Kudgrat, that's a little bit trickier to make that work. But if we use one of those Oneros to get Emir down here, give spying to basically every unit that they play, then that sets up both Kudgrat and Terranova. So that sounds good to me. And we did win round one after playing one more card than our opponent. I'm thinking we probably do try pass here. I'm a little bit concerned about a short round 
with them replaying Meliusine from their graveyard, because 24 points is a lot. So I think long round three is definitely in our favor here. It's Burno for more discard. We did see they had several discardable cards previously. Did they get rid of all of them, or will they thin some of them out here once again? Yes, they will. Ooh. Ride of the Sea. I mean, that's one way you would normally replay Sigdrifus Right to replay Melusine. But they had so many Mahaka Males, that's the target this time. Okay, not loving Fangs of the Empire here. There is Amir. That was going to be one of our Oniromancy targets. That means now suddenly we can get whatever we want with Oniro. And then a Turncoat, I mean, could give solid damage when combined with Amir. Yeah, I suppose we can hold on to them in that case. And our Oniro targets will probably be some combination of Vadier, our Defender, and maybe a Thirsty Dame or Seditious Aristocrats. Okay, there's their Defender into Coral. Yes, we saw they used a fair bit of discard. Have they used both of their burners? I think they have. So I don't think that is nearly as much of a threat as it might normally be, because yes, they have one burner and two burners, both in their graveyard right now. I think still the primary concern remains. Do they have any way to resummon Melusine? Well, let's begin with Oniro into our defender. Oh, and they only got one of those out there. Oh, right, they got Coral, I was going to say. Does that mean that they have the other defender in their hand? No, they just have other nine provision cost units. And, well, they did have the other defender in their hand, as it turns out. And it is to set up another Coral. Okay, so now we go with Emir. And this is tricky. Do we prioritize the boosting with Thirsty Dame, or do we prioritize the damage with the Thanad Turncoat? I think now that they have the Defender down there, the damage is going to be tougher to get through that. So we probably do prioritize Thirsty Dame boosts over Turncoat damage. And this time, I mean, Royal Decree gives us all the flexibility we would ever want, so let's get rid of the Turncoat then. And actually, Kud Graw... It's going to be tricky here. Fukusia, this is going to be to get back Melusine, I have to imagine. Oh, Sigvald! Second time, maybe, Melusine? Yes, it is. As anticipated. Hiding behind those defenders. Okay, and tell you what, this is going to take several turns to set up, but it might be worth doing. If we go Royal Decree into a Sire, use her, to get back Philly, then use the second Desire to also get back Philly. Then we can use Oniro on our next turn to play both of them. And because Covenant of Seal already has the defender status, that means that it's going to be a little bit quicker for us to break through that. There's another Melly scene. This one, of course, doesn't have all the boosts the previous one had, or at least base power increase. So now we go Oniro. Into one Philippe. And make it two Philippe's. This one will gain zeal because now we do have a vampire down here. So let's go after one of these defenders. And let's also use our leader ability here. Okay, some Mardrums and a Hermit. Not all that impressive. Though I'm not the biggest fan of how they work for us either. Yes, Mardrum on the defender that has armor is a little more helpful. So there's the Hermit. That gives them a little half room. So now what we do is we can destroy this Covenant of Steel. Or rather, give it poison. And then, destroy that Covenant of Steel. Technically, we should have played Thirsty Dame first. That was a little bit sloppy on my part. Because this... Had the potential to get pretty big. It's a little bit late in the round at this stage, of course. And we know their last cards are just Martyr Rims all across the board. Okay, so now we either go after this Covenant of Steel, or, I mean, we could go after this little half-through, but I don't really think that's all that meaningful. 
So we lock, we poison, and then on our next turn, we'll be able to use our second poison. We do not have any Skelga units of our own, so Fukusia does not really matter with Kudgras, so I think we're going Terra Nova here. And we'll get possibly even Sigvald. Second Terra Nova, well, turn is technically expired here, so it's going to give us another Sigvald. It's probably what we would have chosen anyway. Okay, then it's Mardroim. And that means they have a lot of bleed on that Sigvald, which they can use to get a pretty big boost. Okay, so we just need a few more points here, and now with no defenders left, we can pick whoever we'd like for Coup de Gras here. But first, let's apply some statuses. Because that alone is almost enough. Then we still don't have a great target for Coup de Gras, but it might even be this little half rune that is best. We play you. We'll get you out here. And won't even need the Sigvalds here. We'll still take the win. All right, so going up against Skoytel here, and we'll go first. Okay, so we have Onero. That's always great. That means we can use this to get our other Onero and get both Echo copies in round two. Terra Nova is a great finisher. However, we'd like to get some nice engines here, and then we can use a Sire in round two or round three to get those copies back into our deck and play those copies with Onero. So let's get rid of Fangs the Empire. Uh, like, actually get rid of it, and maybe... The Hunter as well. Okay, you know, not loving what we have here. Unless we use Onero to get something like Emir, Philippe, and or a Defender to help protect them. But we do also have Curse Scroll and Royal Decree to help us get those cards. So I think we'll still be fine. So let's start with Onero. Into the other Onero. Into the Defender. And let's split them across two different rows just in case. Okay, they'll go Cat Witcher for some damage. Get them another Cat Witcher for more damage. So now let's use Curse Scroll. Get Emir. And in that case, let's put back a Thanad Turncoat because I don't think we're going to need to apply that much spying if Emir is going to give everyone spying. So let's play Emir now. And that'll give us. A Letho to draw into. I like that a lot. Maybe we dump Van Molehem's Servant in that case. We get our other Amir here. Draw into Royal Decree, which is also quite nice. Maybe we get rid of the Hunting Pack in that case. We can get it later with that Royal Decree if needed. So Amir has definitely helped to fix our hand quite a bit. Yennefer. Well, uh, we do have a lot of cards that all have 7 power. However, the armor on our Defender should help make that Yennefer a little less effective. And of course, since Emir is giving spying to all these cards, we could use Coup de Gras on either Yennefer or Olgierd to return the favor. However, with Olgierd as their highest card, that's actually a really strong counter. It means that Yennefer is only going to hit that and it's not going to do anything since Olgierd can't get damage. Let's go with the Thirsty Dame here because this will get boosted whenever they get some statuses. And similar here for the Seditious Aristocrats, though spying specifically in that case. Okay, then Dolbathon a Sentry, which will boost up those Cat Witchers. And crazy as it sounds, it might even be worth going Coup de Gras on the Dolbathon a Sentry, playing them in the melee row to deal some damage to these Cat Witchers whenever they move. That's kind of tempting. Because Letho to create additional Emirs is not really necessary. And we could go with a Royal Decree to get a Philippe. However, I'm not sure that's going to be necessary either, given how much of a lead we already have. So I think we do go Coup de Gras here. Melee Row to deal damage to them. And then we can apply Spying to... Who does not yet have it? I guess one of these Cat Witchers. Okay, then it's Melena for more movement. And even more movement with Nivellin. So are they going to try to move our defenders, perhaps? 
Except by doing so, uh, yeah, you moved them here as well, so it's not like you're gonna be able to get at any of them. Now it is just this lonely, seditious aristocrat over here. But of course, now we could coup de gras and uh, make another Dolmathon a sentry in the melee row if we'd like. Oh, that's probably why they were concerned about the movement. Could even go with the Melina, though I'm not sure that's quite as valuable to us. I mean, as soon as we create the Dolmathon a sentry in the melee row, they're gonna try to move it out with Melina, but we're gonna get boosted in the process, so yeah, you know, sure. Sure. Why not? Not to mention, it gives us Hunting Pack. Which will give us all the other hunting packs out from our deck for some nice thinning. And yep, as expected, they move that double with this entry and play another. But that Berserker is not too much of a problem. And I am kinda tempted to pass here, because we have a pretty sizable lead, and we will still get boosts whenever they play cards, because these Emirs will still be doing their thing, giving spying to whoever they play, and maybe they realize that, because this may be a rage quit. And yeah, they disconnect. So that means we'll take the win, but I think we know that this was truthfully a rage quit, because they just couldn't handle the statuses. So there's a look at a Nilfgaard Super Status deck for the new Double Down Seasonal Event. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below to let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.